Hi, this is Rich Merritt with Digital Combustion, and today's tutorial video will be on the library panel. When you first start Fire Studio, this is the screen you're going to see. You've got a blank canvas here basically to start making your simulation. So the first thing you're going to need to do is start adding backgrounds and things to your simulation. So we're going to go ahead and go to the library panel. So I click this library button and it brings up the actual library for Fire Studio and then all the default layers that come with Fire Studio are found in these different libraries. And this button here is a toggle switch so if you click it again it goes back to the slide menu and then it turns into the library button again. So we're going to go back to the library and start taking a look at it. So the first library that you see here at the top is backgrounds and so if we look through that we can see the different backgrounds that come with Fire Studio and we give you a lot of them to get get you started and different types and high rises, low rises and apartment buildings and things like that. So those are the buildings that come with Fire Studio. And so let's go ahead and throw a background on there. Let's go ahead and take this two-story motel and click it on the screen. Now once you click something on the screen you can see that it listed a couple things in these in the window layer list and the all layer list. So up to the right the window layers it shows the two-story motel and that's a background and you can tell that in Fire Studio 7 because it's got a color coding where backgrounds are in yellow and it makes it easier once you start adding a lot of layers to the screen to see which layer is which. Now if we go over to the left side where it says all layers this is every layer that's in the entire simulation. So if you had a 50 slide simulation where you had a bunch of different backgrounds and layers and everything, all those layers will show up in this all layer list. So I'm going to go back here and let's say I just wanted a different background. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look through and, and see what I see. And if I decided I wanted to um, put this picture on here, I can just click add. And what that does, if you look in the window layer list, it swaps out whatever background was there because you can only have one background at a time on a window. So anytime you add one, it's just going to swap out the other one. Now if you go now to the all layers list, even though that got swapped out, we can still see that that original two-story motel is still there. And now the second building that we've added is on this list. And so those will all, even if we, we remove it or get things out of there, they'll stay on the all layers list. Now if you start getting too many on that list and it's getting confusing to you, you can use this button that says clear unused layers and it'll get rid of anything that's not being used in your simulation. So that becomes handy down the road if you have a lot of different layers and it's getting a little overwhelming to, to figure out what you have in there. But for now we're just going to leave it and look at some of the other different libraries. So I'm going to go down and drop down to the smoke library and start cycling through some of the different smokes that come with Fire Studio and you can see that it's got like a transparent background with this little checkerboard so that's way you can see through it and you can see what it's going to look like on a bright background. If you wanted to look at it on a black background you can uncheck this background box and then you can see it, it comes onto a black screen and sometimes it's a little difficult to see smoke so especially some of the darker smoke on a, a black background so you might want to have it like that so you can toggle it back and forth. When you go to the fire layers I prefer to have a black background when I look at that because it gives me a little better idea of what that smoke will look like in a dark window or something like that. So we're going to go ahead and, you know, I, that's when I'll turn off that background. But back to the smoke, um, I'll turn it off and we'll just take a look at um, this dark turbulent smoke. And that's new to Fire Studio 7. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that. And okay, that's the one I want. I'm going to click Add and then that adds it to the screen and I can change the size of it and, and do some different things but we're not going to go into editing the layer at this point I just wanted to put it on the screen and show you how to use the different um, libraries and if we go we can look at some of the different things that are in there if I wanted to add some of that fire I can click on it click add and move it around and resize it and like I said we're not going to we're not going to worry about editing anything but this is a good time for you to go around and explore some of the different smokes and fires that are in there and leaks and if we wanted to do some nav icons, so if we wanted to put some navigation on the screen where someone could click on and go somewhere else, we can do that. Um, we've got a lot of different damage, and we've got charring and blast marks and different soot and 
smoke stains and different things that you can use um, on the clip out. So when you look on the different libraries that come with Fire Studio, just go ahead and start clicking things on the screen, play with it, move it around and start just, you can't really hurt anything. You can always just start over and get rid of layers and um, start from scratch again. But this is a good, good way to kind of familiarize yourself with the different things that come with Fire Studio. So again, that's a uh, quick tutorial on the library panel and how the libraries work. So hopefully this will help you on some of your simulations. Again, I'm Rich Merritt with Digital Combustion and we will see you on the next tutorial.